Hi everybody, it's Stacy, the Redhead, your Independent Scentsy Consultant. I'm coming on tonight to try and talk to you guys a little bit about oils um, with your pets and aromacology. So um, we're going to just kind of try to wing it. I have been researching and looking at many, many websites today trying to gather some information. Um, but I want it to pertain for the most part to our Scentsy oils and the fragrance aspect kind of, but there's a few things that are probably going to intertwine. I do not claim to be an expert on any of this information. It is just what I found. I've got a few websites that I'm going to let you know where I got the information so you yourself can go look up the information. Um, so yeah, we're just going to kind of go from there. And you guys know how I roll. Sometimes it might be a little scattered, so just bear with me, please. We're going to see if anybody is going to pop on. I want to say thank you for tuning in. And if you're not with me live, thank you for watching the replay, you guys. I appreciate it so much. So much. I put a little sticky note over here on this side to remember to try to look over there. So, <laughs> and I noticed it already <laughs> fell off. <laughs> That's all right. We'll still get it. So, to start with, then I guess I'm going to jump in with this really quick while, um, while we get rolling here. So, this video might be a tad longer than I normally do them. I usually try not to let them go over about 15 minutes, but, um, and hopefully I can wrap this up in about that time frame. So I brought the diffuser in here. As you guys know, we have a diffuser special. Um, what amped me to talk about this a little bit is I had been seeing a lot of things on the website, or I mean, excuse me, over social media about people being concerned with pets. And um, so it, that's what made me want to talk about a little bit because I think there's a lot of misinformation uh, and I tried to find the most accurate information that I could find. And again, I'm just going to give you tidbits because I am no expert. And I would feel much more comfortable if you guys looked up the information yourselves. But I'm going to give you um, things to know to kind of look for. So my diffuser right now is empty. We're going to get this rolling real quick as we start talking about this. So it's empty. Now, when if you can see... I wanted to show you guys. See, there's a residue in there from your oils. And actually, I've not cleaned this probably in a couple weeks, so it's due. So you always want to kind of clean it out. And as I've said before, you never want to submerge your diffuser. This is a quality, I can't remember the P word that it is, does not break down. Um very very sturdy long lasting and it's a very good size as you can see the reservoir in there so what I do to clean mine I just take a paper towel and I simply wipe it out and that little nebulizer down there in the bottom I just kind of wipe around the the seal little area there And then a little bit on the outside. So there, it's nice and clean and ready to go. So, again, you can use tap water, cool tap water with your diffusers. I choose not to because we have hard water. It's, it tastes very chemically. We don't even drink it. So I use distilled water in my diffuser. So I'm going to fill it up to the max fill line As you can see that was a pretty good amount of water and I'm going to add lavender now, I'm going to tell you why I'm going to um, diffuse lavender right now doing this video uh, number one everything I've read today states that lavender is completely safe, safe for pets with the exception, cats, 
Felines seem to be the ones that are the most susceptible to oils. I would definitely, unequivocally, if you have a cat, research any oils that you plan on getting or that you have um, and check it, check with your vet or whatever to make sure around your cat. Felines are the one pet that is the most susceptible and birds, of course. So from everything I've read, even the vet website, which one of them that I went to was um, thebark.com, stated that lavender actually is a calming, has a calming effect. So, and some vets do use it for pets. Ours are not used for that. Ours are fragrance only oils. But lavender, and that's another thing I'm going to get into. Lavender is lavender is lavender in the broad spectrum. Yes, they're made in different ways, or different lavenders they might be pulled from, but as a general rule. Now the reason we do not market our oils as therapeutic, and I'm gonna read it straight from the fact sheet on this part. Uh, da -da 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 -da. What is aromatherapy? That's not what I wanted to read. Hold on a second. Therapy. Our Sensi Oils Therapy Grade. Therapy grade is a misleading term. Don't scream at me, please. <laughs> Nobody is saying that they're not therapeutic, the other oils, okay? <laughs> Therapy grade is a misleading term. There is no official entity, governmental or otherwise, that screens, evaluates, or grades essential oils. In the spirit of authenticity, we do not make any claims about our products that cannot be substantiated or verified. That is why Zinzi has chose to keep it as fragrance-only oils. Now, that is not to say certain oils have... Um, beneficial effects on people. I mean, that's known. Oils have been used since the 11th century. The first oils that were distilled, and that is actually how essentials oils or essential oils are, as they are. Uh, what is the exact term? Like I said, bear with me because I have been researching so much information. <sighs> It's a distilled, but there's another word before it. Steam distillation, that's what it is. Steam distillation. And so the first um, record of steam distillation with oils was around the 11th century. So what is the difference between aromatherapy and aromacology? Well, aromatherapy is usually what oils are used for, like when you get a massage or, um, what was the other one? Massage, oh, and baths, other treatments where the oils are absorbed through the skin or inhaled. Um, aromatherapy, again, is a loosely defined and there is no consistent or standard definition. Now, the reason they say that, the term therapeutic, now this comes from, and I'm going to give you the site for this too, and actually this is where I got a lot of good information, was from Dr. Papa, which is a weedemandreap.com, which is W-E-E-D-E-M-A-N-D-R-E-A-P.com. And what he does is he breaks down like 10 myths of essential oils and it was very interesting and very enlightening but the term therapeutic he kind of explains it as its relative he says it has a you know it may have therapeutic healing but there is no universally accepted independent body that certifies essential oils as therapeutic grade 
and that he says can be a factual statement. It does not mean that there's not entities of a, you know, different form or whatever that says that they might be, um, you know, therapeutically safe for different things, but like the FDA does not back that they are an actual therapy oil kind of a deal. So, which is why we go with Sensi uses our oils and we say aromacology because aromacology is a scientific, excuse me, <laughs> there's scientific evidence that the certain scents, which we all know this, stimulate the olfactory system. The olfactory system is um, in your brain and it's what makes your scents work, right? So that's what's connected to your smell and it can induce a chemical reaction to make you feel relaxed, energized, calm, whatever the case may be. And that is what is known as aromacology. So it's just the fact that certain smells, certain scents can make you feel certain ways. And that's a fact, that's true, absolutely. Okay, let's get this baby going while I'm talking. Okay, we're gonna put on, this is the um, Reflect Shade. I haven't done this one in a while. So I'm gonna put this on high. The reason I put it on high right now, my pets, my dogs are right down here by me and they're laying close to me. So I'm gonna actually, let's put it on low. I don't think it'll really matter, but. So as you saw when I put those oils in there, they're diluted, right? Because it's not, just this is not going into the air. Just oils are not emitting out through the air. They're not gonna get into my, my dog's noses or anything like that. It's got a nebulizer in here, which kind of breaks it up and then it's combined with that water that's in your diffuser and then the oils combine with that and then you're getting a mist, a cool mist that's coming out of your diffuser. Now, the one exception I do wanna say, cause one of the big ones was tea tree oil. Tea tree oil from every single site I went to says it's not safe for, I will never use tea tree oil again around my dogs. Let's just put it that way. Me personally, it's never gonna happen. Um, but usually the concentrates have to be fairly large but there has been known um, toxicity in the tea tree oils and your pets. So um, lavender from everything I've read has been a one that's safe. Now this is just a few that I'm going to read. Um, and I wanna state before I do that, cause there is one on here called camphor. Now everything that I looked up with lavender, almost every single lavender oil that you're gonna find has a touch of camphor in it. And from what I've read, it would be super rare if you found one that didn't. So the minute amount of camphor that is in this lavender oil is not gonna be enough to affect your pet, unless you're, like I said, physically putting this on. And anything that I've read again today states um, ingesting oils, is something I would research further. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say on that. <laughs> um, so there is a touch of camphor in the lavender from, according to the website, I couldn't find on our site where there was camphor in this, but I'm assuming there has to be from what I read. So the ones that I would not use around my dogs are anise, camphor by itself, clove, thyme, wintergreen, birch, juniper, mustard, pennyroyal, rue, wormwood, yarrow. There might be a few others. Like I said, this is just some that I found on the various websites that I went. So those are a few that I will not use around my pets. And again, don't forget, cats are another whole ball game. If you have cats, please be careful and just research thoroughly when it comes to your felines. Now, another thing that I had found is most, if you do use them around your pets, this is you wanna make sure that they are a good quality oil and you're using a good quality diffuser. 
So, which is why I brought this up because this diffuser diffuses a cool mist. It has a nebulizer in it and it is combined with the water in the diffuser. Apparently some just emit the oil itself. That apparently is not a, a, a good way to do it from what I read, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> I don't get in trouble for saying any statements that, you know, this is all my opinions. It has nothing to do with Sensi and it's information and research that I have found spending hours today on the computer. <laughs> also, to have to, as a rule, to get a good quality oil, it states that most of them are in a um, an amber bottle, glass, a cobalt or a violet glass bottle. Now the other issue, like if you find some that are maybe in clear glass, the concern with that and pets is because sometimes those lesser quality oils have other additives that we don't know what they are. So we have no idea what's going into the air around our pets. That ain't cool. So you, the important thing is to have a good quality oil with a good quality diffuser, and hopefully that will ease some of your your mind with your pets. Um, what else did I find? So the therapeutic. I told you guys about the aromacology. Um. The other thing, uh, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought, you guys, darn it. Lost my train of thought. Yeah, well, anyway. Um, so, if you guys have any questions or there's something that you want me to look up, I'm happy to look up for you. So with all this hubbub going around, I really want to, um, the main thing doing this is just to reassure you that there is so much misinformation out there about essential oils. They're not bad. And just because people say, um, you know, they're not backed by the FDA, I'm sure medical professionals would... Um, God, I wish I could talk to a medical professional, actually. Maybe I should try to do that sometime and see what their opinion is. I might try to figure that out. Um, so it's personal preference is what I'm getting at. I think if you want an oil and you feel like I enjoy lavender and I enjoy my patchouli rose and it's not going to harm my pets, number one, I don't leave my diffuser in a spot where it's going to emit right over my animals. It's not in an area where they're like laying all the time. Um, it's not, and if I feel like, like I just turned it down on low or whatever, or if it's a scent that I'm not too sure about, I'm gonna look it up and make sure that it's not gonna be, there's nothing that's gonna, you know, harm my pets or whatever. Um, so I think a lot of it's just common sense and just kind of make sure that you do your own research and just don't go by, you know, one or two things that you read. You want to go and look at four or five or six different websites and make sure that they're unbiased opinions. You don't want to have, I mean, you can go and find, you know, a negative thing if that's what you want to hear. I mean, we all can, you know what I mean? So, um, in my opinion, I think whether it's a therapeutic use or it's a fragrant fragrance use, I think a lot of those can kind of are pretty close line depending on the oil, of course. There's many oils that we don't have or don't, um, you know, don't sell for that reason. You know, they're um, more difficult to get, they're more costly, and that's something Scentsy doesn't do. So, you know, those would be you know, your other oil companies. But that is another thing, again, that's nice about our diffusers is that you can use any oils in our diffusers and it doesn't void that lifetime warranty. So um, a quality diffuser is just as important as a quality oil. So basically, I'm just trying to explain why we do not market ours as therapeutic. That's a lot to have on your shoulders and everything I've been reading, I don't want to, wouldn't want to be held 
um, liable or anything for giving misinformation, you know, about those type of oils. So that's kind of scary digging into all of that. So um, I, I'm happy with my fragrance side of it. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> very happy oh another thing I wanted to tell you guys I don't know if you know this now there is expiration on oils and some want to say that they can last forever and there are some like patchouli that they say gets better over time but as a general rule they do and will break down um so Sensi we say two years two years and if you haven't used that oil or it's still you know sitting around after two years um, I would get rid of it and uh, replace it. And two years is a good rule. I mean, I would maybe you could probably push it to two and a half, but I would not go over that if I were you. So what I'm going to start doing for me personally is I'm going to write a date when I get it on my oil box so I can kind of keep an eye on that. And mostly for, well, you know, we got to take care of ourselves just as well as our pets. We, we matter too, you know, so um, it's just as much for our benefit as our pets, so. Um, I did not pull up the good oils that were good for your pets because, again, there was so many varying things, just the ones that I could find from the vet that, you know, said that they used the lavender. And, of course, there was some others that, you know, are perfectly fine. Peppermint is another one that had seemed to have no issues. Uh, I can't remember some of the other ones. But it makes sense because these oils, you guys, are... Um, they're pulled out of so many different things. Some oils are, pearl, are pulled out of bark. Some oils are, are pulled out of plant leaves. Um, citrus oils, they're just pulled out of the peel, like lemon. A lemon oil is a lemon oil. That lemon oil comes from a lemon, out of the peel of a lemon. You can only pull it out one time, and that's what you get out of that lemon peel, correct? <laughs> so... Um, there's roots, there's bark, I said that, flowers, um, and some flowers and those oils are harder to access than others, which is again why the cost goes up. Oh, and that was what else I wanted to say. That's why we do not put our oils in combine and saves. I've had that asked before. We do not, because there's so many variances with the oils, um, drought makes a difference, you know, weather, um, different natural disasters that could go on that can fluctuate the cost. So instead of sensing each time, you know, something like that happens and raising the price or, or lowering the price, they try to keep it at an even keel, which is why they vary from 10 to $26, depending on which oil you get. Um, and that largely is in reference to how difficult it is to get. And we do not use any synthetics in our oils. There's no synthetic additives whatsoever. Every place I've looked. So they're pure. Again, I don't want to say pure because that's another term that is super, super um, iffy. Pure. <laughs> pure is, uh, is a tough one. I'm not even going to go into all of that. There's a lot of scientific stuff that goes into that. But our oils are 100% natural, and there is no synthetic additives in there. That's that. Um, but, oh, I was on something else, too. I'm super passionate about this because I really do enjoy the oils, and I do know that when I diffuse my oils, which are the Scentsy oils, I get benefit. And I didn't know that... Um, some of these things that have to do with the pet. So I'm hoping basically that it helps you. It's helping me. And again, if I'm wrong with any information, please feel free to um, correct me or, or let me know, you know, what you think or what your opinion or what you saw or whatever, what your knowledge is. And again, if it's something simple that has to do with the fragrance side, aromacology, I'm happy to um, give you any information that I can on that aspect of it. Okay. Um, thank you guys. I know that was kind of a lot of boop, 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 boop. And I'm sure I missed a whole bunch of stuff because I've got more stuff highlighted that I didn't even say. But it doesn't seem to um, matter with what I said. 
I think I mentioned the topical and ingesting. That's a big no-no here. A big no-no with aromacology. Okay, we'll just leave that at that. Um, I guess that's it. Okay, thank you again, you guys, so much for tuning in. What do you think of this Reflect diffuser? Was it cycling through colors or did I have it on one? This one's really, really pretty. All right, guys. Thank you again so much for tuning in. I very, very much appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Peace and love. Please be kind. Share the love. And until next time. Get my head out. Peace.